Wow, talk to him, Cheese. Hello and welcome to this amazing, crazy event. Glitch Infinite, Banjo-Kazooie 100% speedrun by the great Duck. I'm here for the first time ever with Trihex. I've never conned with Trihex. This yeah. is really exciting. <laughs> yeah, you're about to get the, the absolute dynamic duo of commentary right now. <laughs> yeah, Banjo-Kazooie is an absolute childhood bang for me right now, so I'm super hyped to see Duck absolutely blow it in the smithereens here. It's one of my favorite games. Like yeah. One of my favorite speed games of all time is Banjo-Kazooie, 100%. It's just so good. I've tried to learn it before. I think I might. At some point, I would learn Banjo. It has to happen. Yeah, I'm excited because there's a, there's a lot of very unforgiving, very specific, high skill, tech ceiling stuff that's going to happen. It's going to yeah. blow y'all's mind. Absolute progress here. Yeah. This game has come so far in the last, like, half decade. It is crazy. Yeah. You will see. I, I promise y'all here, like, get your donations ready, get your wallets ready here, because if you if you pog out loud, I want a $5 donation for the children for speed <laughs> on behalf of Duck Today. All Please. right, yeah, donate. Give generously. All right, can I get going? Yeah, are you feeling good? I'm ready. You I'm ready, ready to rock and roll I'm here? I'm ready to do this thing. All right, do well, it. everyone, everyone in right. chat now, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Duck while we commentate here. This is Banjo-Kazooie 100%. Sweet. Let's do it. All right, uh... Let's get the timer going in three, two, one, go. All right. Banjo-Kazooie 100%. I'm happy to have Cheese and Trihex, the most knowledgeable BK speedrunners I know, <laughs> here Absolutely. to help me out. Yeah, so the um, first thing that's really worth noting is that uh, there's a couple of versions of 100% that's commonly run. And uh, I'm going to be doing one called No FFM, which means I'm not going to be using a glitch that allows you to start the game with a bunch of the moves already learned. Um, that was like the most competitive way that this game was ran for a while, but uh, as of recently, a lot of people have been switching over to no FFM, just because like the FFM glitch that you have to set up before the run is pretty tedious, and, and I don't know, it's, it's a nice change of pace to not have to do it every time. It saves three minutes, but I don't know, it's not really worth the setup, so. For today, we'll be doing no FFM, which means that I do have to go to bottles to learn every single move. I'm on a truly empty file with, with nothing, no progress made or it's anything the, like that. The purest speedrun, man. <laughs> as right. pure as it gets. So essentially, we're doing the three minute tutorial at the beginning of the game to learn all the moves? Right? Yeah, this is, well, in the normal game, you can actually tell bottles you don't need to do this tutorial and you don't need to learn these, like, really basic moves. So this is fine, you can just skip these anyways. Um, but I have to make my way around here because 100% for this game includes all the empty honeycombs, jiggies, and notes. Because that would fill out the uh, the total screen. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. So because of Hundo is why we're doing this. Exactly. Not yeah. because it's faster in any kind of way. No, no. I got I got all six honeycombs here. That 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 is necessary for the 100% run. You got to get all of those. So may I ask you a very really basic question? Sure. What is 100%? Is it every collectible on the on the pause screen, or like? No, it's well, yeah, it's on the to there's a total screen on the pause screen, and you view totals. On there, all that's included is empty honeycombs, jiggies, and notes. So I'm gonna be getting all the empty honeycombs, jiggies, and notes, and then just beating the game after that. Um, yeah, I just did a trick called bottle skip, by the way, at the very top of that mountain. If you land or like. There's like a very, very certain way you can move around Bottle so that he doesn't activate and talk to you for a little while. So I was able to skip that text. So I was actually going to ask time. you about that because I, when I used to watch this a lot, you usually do the backflip. Yeah, that's on true. Top. Yeah, like Trihex was saying, this game's come a long way in the last little while. The last time it was ran at an event kind of similar to this was, uh, I want to say, Summer Games Done Quick uh, in 2019. It was a race between myself and Haganator. And like since then, there's been a ton of new discoveries. Like even little things, like a faster version of the bottle skip, where you don't do a backflip, is like a, a, a one of the many new things we're going to be showing is, off. It's also, is it also easier? Because I remember seeing people lose runs to that backflip, just yeah. like failing the bottle <laughs> skip. It's debatable. Yeah, okay. it could be for some people. So yeah, as you notice with uh, with no FFM, I do not start this level with the ability to get into Talent Trot, which is the fastest form of movement. So I'm going to try to quickly get over to Talent Trot, but I'm going to get as much as I can on the way. Obviously, you're going to see me collecting, in every single level, 100 notes, two empty honeycombs, and 10 jiggies before I can get out. 
This is awesome to me because, like, when I tried learning this game in 2015, I did I was learning new FFM, so, like, all this movement is, like, bringing back memories. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, like, with the new, with the resurgence of a bunch of people, especially at the highest level of competing with new FFM, it encourages more people to pick up the game, give it a shot. Yeah. You know, because FFM, obviously, like, kind of a scary barrier to entry for some. So here's Talent Shot. Oh, that easy. Now I know the move. I'm going to be mostly using Kazooie for movement from now on. Much faster than rolling around. So now we're, like just, we're, we're retiring Banjo early now? Already. Yeah, he's chilling for the rest of the run. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do much. Kazooie and Kazooie, y'all. Yeah, Kazooie. <laughs> so that's the first Jiggy. Couple of text boxes to skip. The rest of this section is just going to be really precise movement, so like, as fast as I can get everything on this hill. I do want to bring attention to the uh, the animation you saw when Duck acquired that Jiggy piece. That's notable because we're going to see animation skips later on, right? Yeah, absolutely. As many as we possibly can. That every single time you do that Jiggy Jig, uh, it's a four second uh, dance set where you have to stop moving. Speaking of which... Yeah, here's another one. So now we're learning the egg move. Uh, you know, gotta shoot this guy real quick, get a jiggy. MLG snipe. Yeah. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I got potato aim. You know, speedrunners weren't made for aiming. Especially platformer speedrunners. Off camera? Okay, I see you. <laughs> okay, well that one was kind of sick. I'll, okay, yeah. Talk, talk about you don't have aim. Yeah, you gotta wait a little bit for him to throw the oranges before he can shoot, so obviously I'm gonna try to get a little closer to this uh, next area I have to be at. I was actually gonna ask you because I never understood that fight. I didn't know when to shoot and like it wouldn't work, so you just have to like wait till he shoots and then you, then you shoot him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and what I did just there, uh, getting him to do both those orange tiles, one after the other, and then uh, making sure that I'm standing in the exact right spot so that when the Jiggy spawns, it spawns right on top of me, and uh, I start doing the dance early during the cutscene, that saves a little bit of time. So wait, so notable here, right? You're supposed to be an ant in the section, right? Yeah, or no? a termite, yeah. But, uh, but, well, you're skilled. But notably on the 1.0 release of the game, the very first release of this game, you can actually not turn into a termite. Uh, I'm using a, a glitch called Slope Glitch, which allows me to climb that tower. Uh, basically, in a lot of games, you can stand on the slippery slope for like a second, and then he'll fall, he'll slide, right? Ooh, nice fall damage negation. I saw that. Yeah. Right, so you would've, you would've gotten hurt there and had a hurt animation had you not canceled that, correct? Yeah, exactly. Something Jesus is very familiar with, right? <laughs> yeah. 64 Mario. Yeah, so um, it's notable that like you cannot do the termite skip that I did earlier we were talking about on any other version of the game other than 1.0. So when they re-released the game uh, in Japan and like made a re-release even in North America, the 1.1 version patches that. So yeah, like in most games, like I was saying, if you stand on a slope for a second, you'll slide off. Um, but that's for this game, it resets every time your shadow touches flat ground. So as long as I make my shadow touch flat ground, I can go on and off of sli uh, steep slopes as much as I want. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated. <laughs> the shadow is the thing that uh, the game assumes you're standing on a slope when your shadow's on the slope. Okay, okay yeah. that's cool. Mm, interesting. Yeah, almost finished up at level one here, Mumbo's Mountain. So every level has a uh, ten. Yeah, ten jiggies, hundred notes, two honeycombs, and then we're out. Oh, so they two honeycombs. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Here, here's a nerdy question: Which is there? Which level has like the highest density of like jiggies per minute? Where you're just like you're in and you're like getting a jiggy every like four seconds. Is it this one? It could be this one, but also Treasure Trove Cove, like you said, we have that like animation cancel going on. So like we're picking up jiggies and we're not doing the jiggy jig. Like you just saw me do there, actually. I did a pretty yeah. significant dance skip. The tenth jiggy of every level actually gives you like a big dance that's longer than the other ones. 
Okay, I had to just sort of focus for a second. For that. Yeah, I see. Wait, wait. You, you just <laughs> did that. That is not intended. They won't pause yeah, up that trick is. Explain I'm, that real quick, please. That's uh, we call that termite skip two. Also, the termite's supposed to go get that jiggy, but with a little bit of you know slope glitch and you know slope abuse, we can make it to the top without the termite. It's like pretty precise input and the timing. And yeah, exactly. Typical speedrun stuff. You just gotta know the timing for when he's gonna slide off and try to be faster than that. All right, so I to, I'm about to call you out here for your speedrunner habits. Yeah. Is it actually faster to jump repetitively as Kazooie, or is that just like a feel-good press buttons thing? That you're uh, doing? Well, it's actually kind of <laughs> interesting. It's the same speed to run in Talon Trot as it is to jump in Talon Trot, but there's a slow acceleration when you start walking. So you have to start jumping and keep jumping and never stop jumping. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm about to do a kind of a difficult trick here. Hold on a sec. Nice. Oh First try. Gosh, dude. That's a tough one. What are, you, what are you supposed to do there? Like, make the cannon shoot the chest? No, you just, um, to enter any level in this game, you go to a puzzle and, and put the jiggies in. And uh, so, actually, in the 100%, one of the things that has evolved a lot is that we don't open a lot of levels anymore uh, because there's a big, long cutscene that plays. That one only saves, like, eight seconds, but I just did it really, really fast, so definitely saved me a good amount of time. Um, yeah, so I just didn't open Treasure Trove Cove, and Treasure Trove Cove is like that ch treasure chest you saw. It's usually wide open, and you just jump in. But I actually entered the loading zone from underneath by ground pounding. I it. saw, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That trick was not around when I tried landing this Yeah, game. that was crazy. Yeah, it's a little bit newer. It, it's something that's been around actually quite a while for any percent, but it wasn't faster in 100% until we figured out how to do it faster. <laughs> so. That's usually the deal, I've seen yeah. with a lot of games. Yeah, you see that a lot. Like, this will never be in 100%. It only saves four seconds. Oh, yeah, well, what if you do it like this? Okay, well, I still don't want to do it because it's really, really hard, and I'll just lose my run and have to reset. Well, then don't do it. Oh, but I really want I saw seconds. that. <laughs> you did the ground pound to bring uh, your, I don't know, body higher than the exactly. backflip. Exactly, yeah. To trigger the exit out of that room. Okay. Yeah, very similar to how I did TTC earlier. The ground pound makes you go up quite a bit. That was really good RNG right there, right? Like, yes. sometimes that guy could, like, mess you up, and you have to, like... What's a cutscene? Yeah, all right, give me a second. Here. Okay, good. I feel like you make flying look a lot easier than it actually is. Yeah, flying in this game is one of the things that's really, really hard when you're first starting out, and, and it's a little unfortunate. People, A lot of people that want to pick up this game kind of give up in Treasure Trove Cove, because uh, it is. That a bit difficult also, to get the flying I want to bring up here that you uh, did another animation skip yeah. by acquiring the Jiggy while in flight mode in that tight confinement of the uh, the chest, right? Yep, and I just did another one and there you did at another the top one. of the lighthouse. Mumbo token in here. So you'll, one of the things to note is Mumbo tokens are not required for 100%, um, but they are required for transformations. So I'm going to be collecting a ton of those, especially early on, um, but not all of them. Gotcha. This is enough for what you need. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay, that was an accident, but we'll be okay. I was meaning to Speak. land up here and take a little bit of damage, but I took a lot of damage and landed on the ground. But a good little back up there uh, to get up the hill. And uh, I'll make sure that I get some extra health because one thing I didn't mention is this is a super non-marathon safe speed run where if I were to die at any point in the level, I would lose every single note that I collected and have to collect it again, basically having to reset the entire level from the beginning. So uh, I'm going to do as much as I can to not die, because an unintended death is pretty big disaster for time loss. Yeah. Right, and, and, and you plan on doing uh, death warping in this speedrun, correct? Yeah, lots of death warping. So yeah, not the safest thing. Yeah, death so warping once I have all the notes, basically. Yeah, so once we have the 100th note and everything else collected here, it's faster to kill yourself to warp upon death that's the beginning of the level, right? Yeah. Grab it and needlessly backtrack. So I'm going to heal right here, just because i got to play it a little bit safe. Safety strats. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Necessary love after voice. that mistake, for sure. The voices in this game are just the best thing ever. It's so good. Well, you can't just tease me. Are you going to give me your best Kazooie impression? Did you ask me something? 
Yeah, are you, are you gonna give me your best Kazooie impression? Kazooie impression? Okay, let's see. Um, you do Kazooie and I'll, is, give, him, is, I'll is, give him Banjo is, afterwards. Him banjo. Is he not your spirit animal, <laughs> Kazooie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No, no, wait, 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 Doug. Your spirit animal's definitely the, the, the ice, whatever, polar bear thing, like. Oh, yeah. Way, way, way. Way. Yeah, that's a big one. Way. Okay, I'm gonna warn you now, chat. If y'all don't donate, you're gonna death suffer through our really horrible snowman <laughs> impressions when we get to that, when we get to Freezy Peak. Yeah. I'm gonna warn you now on that one. Donate to prevent us from impersonating. If, I don't, if we don't get $100 <laughs> by the time we get to Freezy Peak, you're gonna suffer, okay? That's, that's a fair warning, that's a warning shot. All right, so now I'm a little more comfortable. Down to two health at this point is a lot better than before this because if you enter here with two health, and what I didn't, we didn't really talk about was I killed this boss from inside out. Uh, so there's a few damage you take automatically just from doing that skip on that boss. Uh, so I needed more health for that, and now I'm now I'm okay. I love these like mid animation cancels. You took Kazooie, jumped from Kazooie on, off of the tree to cancel into the. I don't know, whatever the beak piercing move. Yeah, rat a tat rap. Yeah. yeah I, I, all this tech skill, oh my god. So here's a trick called Leaky Skip if I can get it. I got it. So basically, I have to nice. learn the move. The eggs go into the bucket, which drains the water, but I have to learn the move before that actually happens so the cutscenes overlap. So Bottles teaches me the move Shock Spring Jump that I just learned, which is very necessary for the whole game. And the water gets uh, drained. If I had screwed that up, um, you would have lost time. Yeah, and I would have been healed as well, which loses a ton of time. Oh, I, I want to die at the end. Very so, nice. Lots of really intricate flying, so I'm gonna kind of be a little quiet. Oh, yeah. Animation cancel right here. Yeah, gotta get a jiggy in flight, and then I have to really remain in flight because I have to fly all the way over here for the last empty honeycomb of this level, which is way out in the water. You don't have the, what do you call the move where you, um, I don't know, you know, you kind of like, when you're already flying, you could like, that's right, forward with, yeah, with FFM, you actually use that move a lot in TTC, it's yeah. called Beak Bomb, Beak Bomb, Beak Bomb yeah. and, uh, and so when you're flying, you can do like a big torpedo attack in the air, and it moves you around super, super fast, um, so yeah, in the FFM version, you're like flying around with that the whole time. Uh, no FFM, you don't have that move, so we're just sort of flying uh, normally around the level. But that's most of what we gotta do for DTC. The ending of the level is actually in the sandcastle, and you'll see how I skip the 10th Jiggy animation at the end of this one. Let's see. So I gotta quickly solve this puzzle. Mm. This wordle was kind of different. <laughs> nice. You ruined it. I was going to make a Wordle joke. You are? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still going to make it. I'm still going to make it. <laughs> Just later on. All right, so 100 notes, and the last jiggy is... Whoop. Shouldn't talk while I'm trying to do this. <laughs> I'm going to get this jiggy and land on the crab oh. and die with it in my hand. So that's the 10th Jiggy. It'll take me back to the beginning of the level, or I can leave right away. So if you had messed that up, that would have been, like, awful? It wouldn't have been awful because I had 100 notes, but it would have been pretty bad because I would have had to actually drain the water again and spell Banjo-Kazooie again. And as you can see, that did take quite a while. So, But I didn't mess it up, so... You're a god. We're good. No, I, I, I love it. I love always, like, illustrating <laughs> the, the consequence, the cost, the risk-reward ratio. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that stake you had you messed that up? Uh, yeah, it would have been like two to three minutes or so. Also, I, I, saw, I, saw that, I saw that ground pound cancel into re-grab on that uh, vine. Yeah. Spicy movement right now. Yeah, I always go for that one, but uh, usually they aren't worth it. But, I mean, you got to try. You got to swag. You got to swag. swag, exactly. Yeah, you gotta swag. It's, swag. it's without a doubt a swag strap. So Clanker's Cavern is the next level. I mean, the most notable thing about TTC is probably all the flying and flying into jiggies, but Clanker's Cavern, one of the more notable things is that this almost this entire level is based on cycles. Yeah. yeah. 
I remember hearing that a lot, and I, I had a lot of trouble with this map. Yeah, and uh, the cycles, of course, it's like, with cycles and speedrunning, you're like, okay, well, this is the best cycle. And then you're like, wait, what if I do this even faster? Oh, then this is the best cycle. Okay, well, what if we do it even faster? Then this is the best cycle. So now, basically, you have to go as fast as you can, as perfectly as you can to get the best cycles. And if you slow down even a little bit, you're not getting any of them. Yikes. Yeah. So uh, you guys can explain what a cycle is if you want. Well, I just kind of, because I'm going to have to kind of focus in for the beginning of this one. Actually, I would say you, you, um, Cheese is probably best familiar to talk about it because yeah. he has a deal of cycles in... Yeah, and Super Mario 64 is... Many stages, many stars have the whole cycle vibe, but like, it's a very typical speedrun. What do you call it? Just um, so, yeah. A cycle generally is whenever you have a bunch of like moving parts and components within a level, and if you're not there in time, kind of like a bus route. If you miss the bus stop, you have to wait for the next bus stop to come along. So it's kind of like that. You have to figure out like in increments how fast to go and how fast to not go to catch the next bus stop. Quote so now I can kind of bring it up. It for instance, that very beginning section of the level where I jumped up and moved around to get all those notes. Now that I'm in the water and I'm swimming, it's kind of a little easier to do as fast as possible. But uh, I'm trying my very best to make it so that when I get down here, I can spawn a really early bubble. So we'll see if I can make that happen. Right, I remember this. So if I was fast enough, then I will see a bubble right here. Perfect, we made it. So we made our bus. But uh, there's more to come, so I gotta keep focusing for a little bit. This level scared a lot of people, having to swim all the way down here. Yeah, like I was like, like nine years old when I first played this. Yeah, this level scared crap out of me. So we'll see if I was fast enough with my swimming here collecting the notes, the Jinjo, and activating the key. Now that Clanker is raised, he bobs in and out of the water, and I'm gonna have to like shoot his gold tooth to open an opening. And basically, you, it's one of those things where you have to wait for it to appear above the water for you to be able to shoot it. So my goal is to get there and immediately shoot it and go in. Right, and it's like, it's a very tight How long window. do you have to wait for him to like get back up if you miss the cycle? It's it's um ten seconds maybe. A little, yeah, like eight to ten or something. So it's worth it to try to just obviously do this perfect, but yeah. it's a pain to, to learn how to nail this for cycle, yes. and I feel like I'm about to. So that feels good. Yeah, that's 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 the worst part. Of learning learning anything with cycles, it's just the annoyance of not being good enough for a long time to be able to meet the fast cycles, and you just have to accept that you have to make slow cycles. Looks like I got it. Boom. Nice. Barely, barely, barely Ooh. can make that one, barely. right? It was like, Ooh. that's how tight the window is. From the moment I entered the level, that's what I was thinking about. Oops. I had to make that two cycle. So Jeez. that whole entire beginning had to be perfect. This one, now we don't really have any cycles. I'm just trying to get in here. There's a little rings mini game I try to do really quickly. And then I get out, and there's yeah. another cycle after that. The best way to put it is just like, yeah, with cycles, there's usually like a global timer active, and you get to accomplish other things while keeping in mind that timer, which makes things very, very stressful. Yeah. I love that strat right there. Ooh, That's yeah. so cool. You can jump off the rings. Okay. Yeah. Spicy. yeah, so we're looking for a 22 here. Or maybe a 23. 23 is pretty cracked. But I don't think I got it. But a 22 would be good. Not bad attitude. Boom. Did I get it? Oh, very close. Oh, close. But still really good rings. Uh, and then once I get out of here, there's another cycle I have to make. Basically, Clanker, now that he's raised, he shoots a bolt out of his... Uh, Low hole, and yeah. it goes like in and out, and then so I want to get there right when it goes out, so I can fall into his blow hole. But there's a lot of stuff I got to do out here. Did you mean to miss that note? I did not, but it's not a big deal. <laughs> you can get it later. Right now, I can't go back for it because I'm trying to make this cycle. Oh, yes! Oh, clutch! It's a big save, but that makes it a little bit harder to make it. So I gotta go really fast now. Oh, I gotta go really fast now. Mm. 
No, okay. I'm gonna miss a cycle, that's fine. Tough stuff. You really can't slow down at all. But now I have a lot of time to make the next cycle so I can kind of make sure I do everything right. That one's really, 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 really tight, so I'm a little tougher. Not a big deal, though. Not a big deal. Can do attitude. Yeah. So yeah, you basically go around the entire outside of the level, collecting everything you can. And so the bolt that just landed, that's where I wanted to go in. Now I just have to wait for a little while for, the, for it to go up, catch the next bus, right? Right. And then just fall in. Okay. So that's about 8 to 10 seconds as well. Not a big deal. As long as I got one of them, they're both extremely hard. <laughs> 69 notes, nice. Very nice. <laughs> So yeah, you'll notice after I did the rings, I just left that jiggy there. Because flying is better than uh, doing the dance. Save a little time. Of course. Don't want to land there, though. That was kind of close. Yeah. <laughs> Landing there's a pretty chunky time loss, but we're all good. So, You're yeah. a madman. I'm just sick at dodging. That's what's oh, going on. Oh my god! Crazy that that Insane. works. Insane. It's just like. Just <laughs> All right. How hard is that to do that? Because I was like, I didn't think. I think you were actually gonna do that. No, this is extremely easy. I mean, anyone can do this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, why would you? Just, they don't just program lie. a. They don't program a hurt box there. I don't know. No, I, what I what I meant to say was, I can just see it a lot better than you because I played the game for a long time. Most people wouldn't be able to dodge those, but you know. With, with enough practice, you can get there. Oh, my, yeah. I mean, That's, we got to make a good story here. Of course. You're built different. You're a symbol different. You're constructed in a way deemed abnormal by society norms. Built differently. <laughs> <laughs> so, the note that I left before, uh, I can get it now. It's right here. No big deal. That's a bug. Out here. So, why is Clunker's Cavern your favorite level in this game? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I love my tactically loaded questions. Go ahead, go ahead and answer it. Yeah, you're like, oh, what level did you get the most jiggies per minute? Uh, what level did... No, this level, I would say it's one of the worst speedrun levels because, you know, anything that's so cycle-based is a little bit less fun for a speedrun. It's not a bad level, though. I think this game has really good level design, really good music. You know, I think it does well in the art department, for sure. Like, Grant Kirkhope, big shout-out. You know, a legend in the video game music composing scene. Facts. Everybody knows that guy. And, uh, love the music in every single level. There's, no, there's not a single miss on this game. Absolutely. All right, so this is the death warp in Clanker's Cavern to take us back to the start of the level. We're actually going to drown. So I have about a minute before I'll run out of air. There's a bunch of things I have to collect. Uh, it's pretty lenient, though. So there's my 100 notes. And then right. there's my second honeycomb right here. And then there's my final jiggy coming up. This one actually is our sixth honeycomb, so it's going to give us another... I just say hard piece, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> honey. Life. Honey. Actual life. Yeah, uh, health, yeah. And then uh, it used to be, it used to seem a lot like tighter and a lot more scary, but. Um, what's scared a, right now, actually. Yeah, you're scared right what, now. What's left? To this. Get. Got it. Okay. And then you still have quite a, like a good amount of time before you die. If, if you're good at your swimming, then that's not too hard to learn. They used to do it the other way, right? You used to grab the honeycomb last. Yeah, and we thought it didn't make a difference, but um, if you do it the way that I just did it now, which isn't the way that I always did it, it uh, reduces lag because Clanker's not on the screen. Oh. Yeah, which we didn't really know about before. Get your golden eye on. Anti-lag strats. Yeah, don't look at don't look at the level. <laughs> So this is a difference between um, FFM and no FFM that I might point out for any already frequent Banjo Runner watchers out there. Uh, we're doing Bubble Gloop 
in its natural intended order, which is level four. Uh, Bubble Gloop in the FFM run is actually the last level, and you enter there as the B, which is a whole nother thing, but we'll get to that later. Gotcha. Uh, Bubble Gloop is next, so I have to open the level. There's no other way in. Bubble Gloop Swamp. Yeah, there's a pretty big lull here. So let's do more Banjo-Kazooie impressions. Which one? Mm, grunty. Grunty. That's my favorite. <laughs> Perfect. Grunty. Oh, no. You were Gruntilda, right? Yeah, Gruntilda. Sorry. You know, her friends call her. Oh my god, you guys are so loud in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> doing so good. <laughs> I've been playing the game for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. My favorite is the. Mm, 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 mm. That's Who the does honey that? Comb, right? Oh, the honey coming. <laughs> the honey <gum. laughs> That's my favorite by far. Reminder again, we're going to be literally insufferable come uh, Freezy Peak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll throw out a donation incentive if people are feeling generous. Uh, I had the idea that. At the end of this run, normally we just open the final boss door with the remainder of our jiggies. But there is a way to get to the final boss without opening that door that nobody that's not worth doing at all. It's called Dog Skip, Door of Grunty Skip. And, uh, and I'll do it for a price. <laughs> oh, go on? I don't know, like 150 bucks? 150 bucks to see this completely unneeded, excessively yeah. difficult, yes. super tech skill, all swag, no merit whatsoever skip? Yeah, it's like a frame perfect uh, skip with no setup at all. So, All right. Sounds you like heard you heard it, chat. We're at 2016. I need to see math. 2166. <laughs> Make it happen. Think this way. It's a bonus because you won't hear my insufferable... Uh, Snowman impression. <laughs> yeah, coming over here to learn the move. Uh, waiting boots. These boots let you get through the swamp without taking damage. I'm not going to use them very much, but I am going to use them at the end of this level because normally we would uh, face the uh, infamous Mr. Vile with one HP. No problem. It's an auto scroller, and we expect to win all three rounds. But I just thought for marathon safety. I'd go in with a little extra health because if you do lose, you die, and this level is extremely long and extremely tedious to recollect everything. So I'm gonna play it pretty safe and head on into Wild uh, with, with extra life. What is your favorite level in this game? Um, I, you know, I was always a big um, fan of Rusty Bucket Bay. I watched a video, I don't remember who it was by, so no disrespect to this YouTuber. Um, and it was like, ranking all the Banjo-Kazooie levels. Oh, number nine, Rusty Bucket Bay. Really? And I was like, boo. Because <laughs> that level, you know, it's hard. And I think that's a big complaint. I think uh, there's a room where there's like, if you fall, you die and lose all your notes. That's a bit of a flaw. Like the, is that the engine room? The engine room, yeah. yeah. But like the level is so, it's so cool. You know, I like a challenging level, and it's so well designed. Like all the Jinjos are really hard to get, and they're each in a different corner. And the music is just slaps so hard. It's like, without a doubt, my favorite track. So. I'm, af I'm afraid, Duck. The problem here is that just like you speed run so long, you you lost connection with the casual player at this point. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, same thing for me. Like when I play Yoshi, people will clap at you know at, at other events, and I'm like. I don't even know what's even impressive anymore when I do this game. Yeah, that's so like. You're just too godly now, you know? I think one of the things that's awesome about Rusty Bucket Bay 2 for the speed run is that it's actually deceptively one of the easiest levels in the run. And it looks really, really cool because everyone's like, you're just breezing through Rusty Bucket Bay. It's like the hardest level in the game. So it makes you feel like a, like a boss. Oh yeah, we could talk about the hot jumps. A little bit precise, but 
instead of breaking all the huts which have shock pads in them to get to the next section, you can do like a really tricky jump to, to skip. There's only one that you have to break. Snipe it, snipe it. Snipe it, jump off. Off camera, I Yeah, because then the cutscene pulls you down, but no fall damage. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you're right down. The synergy, I love it. Mm -hmm. No fall damage, no swamp damage. Easy. And we skip that jiggy because we're going to get it as a alligator, right? Yes, that's right. The alligator Wait, wouldn't do the damage. Alligator? Crocodile? Which, which uh, one? crocodile. Crocodile? Yeah. I'm waiting for chat to angrily correct me on that. <laughs> it was a 50-50 call and I couldn't remember which one it was. You guys have the chat? I don't. Oh, uh, okay. I have it up on my phone while I'm about to. <laughs> I can open if you want me to. Uh, I mean, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll find it real quick. I feel weird not reading chat. I like reading chat. <laughs> you guys let me know if they have any questions or anything. Or you can answer their questions I with mean, your extreme like, knowledge of Bandit. Of course. <laughs> it's probably why aren't you doing more impressions? Yeah, exactly. That's it's what they want right that's now. That's my thing they're going to be asking right now. So again, I'm running around with what appears to be dangerously low health, but I can just heal right here. There's a bunch of health I left behind from those frogs. Ah. Good to get this. Whoa, what happened to the sound? Hello? Oh, no. never mind. That was just a game glitch. Wait, game what? glitch. Weird. New tech. Who this? So, uh, yeah. It's good to get that jiggy uh, during the cutscene, obviously. Uh, overlap cutscenes and dances so you don't lose any time. So far, this bubble loop's going pretty dang good. Let's get it. Shouldn't say that though. <laughs> you know, since we're already jinxed it here, yeah. How are we looking on pace right now? I'm not sure. Uh, Treasure Trove Cove had a pretty big mistake, but probably still fine. So I did something where I moved off screen there. Yeah, this is this looks unintended. Whatever. Oh, I see. So you get I got to start hit, be so I could start before the. E I got to play while it was going on. The Simon right. says. That's cool. Yellow, blue, pink, light blue. Okay. Definitely still memorizing these right now. Okay. I'm just memorizing, no big deal. Okay. Wow, such a good memory. <laughs> I was gonna wake, so I'm like, whoa, whoa it's, it was red, blank, red. I don't know. If, <laughs> I freaked out for a second there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, normally what we do as speedrunners is we uh, just type it in our chat. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, big yeah. brain, big brain. Oh, Personally, I was looking at it and I was like, okay, this is like an Android unlock screen. I'm, just I mean, gonna, I'm like, also looking at the swipe. Oh, yeah. See, I could have just memorized it, but I was a little worried about it. Uh, just because, like, we don't, we, like, we just don't memorize it normally. So I don't even know if it's hard or not. Probably not. There's only, like, seven things. But Okay, so right now I should be, oh, I'm at full health. Okay, interesting. Oh, that's right. I collected one I didn't mean to collect when I killed that dragonfly. So, yeah, not a big deal, though. I have more health. Just have to take an extra hit somewhere. Swamp boots. Yeah. I love this theme. Yeah, the Banjo Kazooie theme. Legendary. You know what I noticed about Banjo Kazooie more than anything that stood the test of time? They just put this music in every YouTube video. Like, every YouTube video uses Banjo Kazooie music. Like, it doesn't matter what game you're playing or. It could be like Ludwig doing like a, a YouTube video about something and then just like banjo kazooie music in the background. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, it's so unapologetically upbeat. I can just like, who, who, who can hate it? Exactly. It's so good. Like, do you know how lit it was like Christmas morning 98 playing this thing? Oh, just, like, yeah. oh, oh, oh my god. The best memories of my life yeah. was getting, waking up to your Santa presence of like the GameCube. With Luigi's Mansion and Sunshine, and then playing those games for like two weeks straight. Two weeks straight, like, mom's all like, when are you gonna go outside? And I'm like, 
outside. Uh, outside. <laughs> <laughs> bought me the best game. Yeah, ever. you got me like. Did you guys ever have the egg timer? Oh my god. That wait, was wait. the most devastating part of my life was when my mom said we could only play video games for one hour at a time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, they put on an egg timer. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, oh, it was so tragic. My mom's thing was like, okay, one hour of gameplay, two hours of rest. And I'm like, can we switch that around? <laughs> what? Oh. Two hours of gameplay, one hour of rest. Look, look, look. I got the AB honor roll. What more do you want out of me, okay? Like, <laughs> that, was my, that was my plea bargain. Dang. How, how could you not be allowed to play video games for one hour? I had terrible grades. I remember specifically this one time... <laughs> When my brother was playing Mystical Ninja, Mystical Ninja, Goemon's Great Adventure, the sequel for the N64. Right. And there was a really, really hard level, and it definitely took like an hour and 15 minutes to beat it. Like, even if you were so perfect at it. And like, I remember the timer going off and him being like, don't tell mom. I have to keep playing. I can't save here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would never <laughs> Hey, hey, hey well, Childhood 101 yeah. there. You just, you just, you just pause the game, turn off the TV, keep the N64 on. Oh, but we had too many siblings. Like oh. someone was going to come in and turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one the TV, tears, man. the when one TV slash the one family PC woes. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but I gotta sing. Here we go, we're racing, Mr. Vile. Greedy crocodile doesn't make me smile. On round one, we'll grab all of these items. We don't gotta fight him, he's real slow. That's right, on round one with Mr. Vile. Greedy crocodile doesn't make me smile. Going around to eat up all the yumblies, yumblies in my tumblies. Hey, let's go. Greedy Crocodile, Mr. Flippin' Vile, doesn't make me smile. Here we go, we're gonna eat up all the yumblies, yumblies in my tumblies. Do da da do, da da do da da. That's right, he's vile. The crocodile, he's a greedy croc. Sucks rocks and don't make me smile. All right, now that time is running out. Mr. Vile is gonna lose, no doubt, cause I'm the better, faster crocodile, and he's stupid slow, Mr. Vile. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, who came up with those lyrics? Yeah, please. Me and my older brother, collectively. Really? Yeah, he, he came up with the greedy crocodile, doesn't make me smile. And I just, like, expanded on it, because we used to play video games, and just, like, for parts like this, especially speedrunning, this is like an auto-scroller. Right. So it's, like, nothing to do other than just play. And so, yeah. You know, we rental flossed it a little bit, made some lyrics to some video game songs. See, you could have told me this was like a Banjo Kazooie speedrun community lore thing that like <laughs> you started, everyone hated you for it, and then they all. Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> this is really true, actually. Some people mute my stream at this part. <laughs> you gotta believe it. Hey, man, haters are your biggest fans. Never forget. I know, right? Hate watchers all day. All day. Still views. <laughs> <laughs> they they muted, but they still watch it though. <laughs> they they watch it. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Oh, by the way, twitch.tv slash duck. D U C K. Tell them. <laughs> if you like Banjo Kazooie, I play it quite a bit over there. All What's right. up, go for a SoundCloud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll drop it on Spotify at, I don't know, 10,000. So. We can do it. You heard it, y'all. 10,000 YouTube subs will do it. <laughs> I think I'm at like 4,000. Yeah. But yeah, round three. Looking oh pretty God. easy breezy. We're quite a bit ahead. Uh, Duck, you broke my brain. Actually, I hear the song now. <laughs> like, I actually can't. It's catchy. <laughs> it's so catchy. It's ridiculous. Greedy Crocodile, Mr. Flippin' Vile, doesn't make me smile. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's this is what Bubble Gloop is all about. It's it's an otherwise boring level, but this Bubble Gloop has been pretty clean actually. Uh, I love it. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna strategically let Vile get a couple here and hope that they spawn close. Never mind. Unlucky. You want him to obviously you want the game to end near the exit, but uh, we got pretty unlucky. We're pretty far from there, so. I gotta make my way Oh, out. I see. Yeah, like over here is where I'm gonna leave. So, didn't lose the vial. It's a pretty nice uh, relieving moment. Do you go faster if you bite like that? Yeah, for this transformation, you have to just keep biting constantly to the maximum speed. Get that jiggy, skip the dance. Yep. That's the way to keep dry pants. What's that from? It's gotta be from like a cartoon we watched. 
Wait, Disney what? Channel. No idea. Wait, what, what, what was the question? It's like, what's, there's something I remember watching. It was like, cross your legs, do a dance. That's the way to keep dry pants. This guy had to pee or something. Wait a minute. More importantly, this is the most rare thing ever. The dragonfly got caught in the tree and he can't kill me. That never, wow. ever happens. Really? And it's extremely wow. hard to die if that happens. I'm about to lose like 40 seconds <laughs> to what? the craziest, rarest Are you thing. Serious? I have wow. to go all Marathon the way. Luck, oh no! I thought it was a good That's thing. That's never no. happened before. No, seriously, that in my life, I've been speedrunning this for like 10 years, maybe three or four times ever. Wow. <laughs> that is crazy that that happened. He was just in. The, I'm talking about peeing pants, and that happens. T tours. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. yeah, huge time loss there. Nothing you can do about it. Very, very rare. If he just spawns in the tree, you can't die. So, is what it is. It's kind of cool that it happened in a marathon, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And an otherwise perfect bubble gloop, though, so a little frustrating at the same time. Mm. All right, making our way to freeze easy peak now. I also want to give a shout out here. I think we, we currently got a twenty dollar donation from Scrambles. Ooh! So we are we are on our way to. Uh, tell me again, what is it here? It's a super swag Yolo skip that. Yeah, is, super swag Yolo skip that doesn't really save any time. That's really hard to do. We're getting there, y'all. Thanks, Scrambles. Scrambles is a member of the Duck community, so good to see them out there representing. Thank you, Scrambles. For the kids, y'all. Yeah. Tackle kids cancer. So what level's up next? Freeze easy peak. The oh, snow level. oh, let me get my let me get oh. my vocal cords all warmed up here. I bet the chat <sighs> better be nothing but what haze when we're in when we're when we're racing boggy. In fact, it's kind of interesting. Freeze easy peak with no FFM, you actually have to do this level in two trips. Really? So you're gonna see me do most of the level right now, but I will be coming back at the end. Well, I'm not supposed to get those nuts yet, but it doesn't matter. You will be seeing me come back at the end for some more FP. Some really exciting stuff. Um, but for now, I'm going to do most of the level right now. Could you Please explain this jiggy right here? Like, how does this work? Yeah, I'm going to explain it to you, but real quick, I uh, actually forgot to do Wordle this morning. So I'm just going to quickly uh, see if I can get it. Okay, yeah, we, we, we can do it together, actually. I'm wondering here if uh, we, Let's we, see. we can Crane. clap here. What's your opening word? Uh, I usually word? do... Oh, I got... Okay, well, never mind. I'm giving up. You're giving up? Yeah, I got uh. gray, 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 gray. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Anyways, normally, <laughs> my normal opening word is stare. S-T-A-R-E. Okay. But uh, I change it up a lot nowadays because, you know, Wordle's been around for too long. Anyways, yeah, this Jiggy, you just have to kill the first guy and then make them go off screen. And then all the, the lights just automatically make it into the tree. Skills. Not a lot to explain. I don't really know how it works, but as long as those guys don't spawn, then they don't eat the lights. Man, this is not... You, you have, like, not shot anything on camera the whole game. I'm talking about you don't snipe. <laughs> like, you've been doing all swag shots the whole time. True, I guess that is kind of how it goes. This is actually one of the coolest tricks in the game, if I can pull it off. It's called YOLO Star. Oh, that's actually really unlucky. I got pinned down by the star. So you're supposed to be able to jump through, fly back, and then ground pound to get through it the third time. Mm -hmm. And after the cutscene's done playing, uh, you're actually still in flight. So even though you've landed, when this cutscene's done, it thinks you're in flight, so it just puts you back in flight anyways. Gotcha. And then you can hit these buttons. But I, I got kind of trolled there a little bit. I want to reiterate that uh, ducks make this look really easy. I feel like the beak bomber move while it's flying really is hard, yeah. really unintuitive. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to understand where you're going or where you're going to go. Yeah, the there's, beak bomber. There's no is... aim reticle, and where you end up going is very not what you're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's kind of like... Uh, the way it works is it's actually you, you end up going where the camera faces the center of the screen. So, I mean, whatever the camera is facing, the center of that is where you'll end up going. So it can make you go like crazy if your camera's like wonky or whatever. It, you think you're just going to aim straight, but that's not how it works. It's not where Banjo's facing, it's where the camera's facing. So it's very tough, and, and like most of the tricks in this game that involve beat bombing 
are some of the hardest parts of the speed run. Yeah, and we're going to see a lot of really unforgiving beak bombing in the in the sand level, right? Yeah. Yeah, really tough stuff there. So right now we're going to do a bunch of beak bombing as well. We have to hit all these snowmen because it spawns a jiggy. But notice I'm leaving behind the Jinjos. That's because we'll get them on our second trip. God, that recoil. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that was awkward recoil. Kind of screwed me up a little bit, but I'm still flying. Oh, wow. These recoils yeah. are really unlucky, actually. Yeah. Uh, I had a feeling I was going to get hit. Okay. Whew, that could have gone a lot worse with those recoils. Uh oh. No. Yeah, chat, they're, they're genuinely like not easy. <laughs> well, I'm very low on health right now. I have to play this really safe. Show them how it's done. All right. My screen is like, it wasn't so bad before, but I don't know if there's anyone who can come up. My screen is like flickering like crazy. Like uh, in and out of like visual. I don't know, it might just be like a loose cord. Immediately it just stopped, so I'm looking like the singing frog guy. <laughs> So you're not going to be um, riding the the, the the ski lift thingy uh, this the, round, the right? sled there? Yeah, yeah, the sled. I will be this round, actually, dude. Oh, okay. I do one boggy race, and I leave the second one for later. And you'll see why uh, when we get there at the end. So yeah, I'm just going to have to play this part kind of safe. Uh, normally, I would take a little bit of fall damage here on purpose to lose health, but I lost a lot of health unintentionally earlier on, so I'm going to do a couple of nifty little things that uh, save some time here. Like, uh, there we go. So I'll just get down to the sled, like you said, and uh, get Boggy up and running. He feels better now. Mm -hmm. Hey, he had, he, was out, he had killer back pain, right? <laughs> Is that what he claims, or was he just sleeping? Yeah, he burp. had a jiggy inside of him. He had to get that out. Uh, yeah. yeah. And here's his uh, abandoned children crying because they don't know where their parents are. <laughs> oh, just a bad father. Wow. <laughs> this is a dark yeah. thing for yeah. Nintendo game. It gets darker. They, they really run with it in Banjo-Tooie. Like, all the kids are lost in an amusement park, and the dad's not even there. And he's, like, sitting watching TV. The mom's just like giving up. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. Rated E for everyone. It's really funny. <laughs> Teaching kids lessons without them knowing. Yeah. There's a ton of like adult innuendo in, in Tui specifically, but there is a good yeah, amount in this game too. Those guys are rare. <laughs> Always doing that. Oh, I'm trying to take damage here. There we go. So it's perfectly fine for me to be at 1 HP at this point. I'm going to transform into a walrus, which can survive the cold water. Yeah. Let's do it. One thing to note is that, randomly, Mumbo can screw up his spells. It's like an Easter egg. But it's a 1 in 40 chance. And if he does that, he turns you into a washing machine. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oops, uh, let me try that again. And then he turns you into the proper thing. If that happens, you lose 10 seconds in your speed run. It's a 1 in 40 chance. Is it really 1 in 40? Because like, yeah. I've seen it happen a lot. Well, like, 1 in 40 is pretty high odds for a yeah. game where you transform this many times. Right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was some pointless swag. So what, what was that? What was that about? I didn't want to get the health because right. I want to stay at one health, but I wanted to get the empty honeycomb, which was surrounding it. So it's like kind of like a pixel perfect. Is that, oh. is that grab one but not happens, the other? Or just happened to happen this time? Uh, I try to do that every time. Usually I do a little bit better than that. Here we go. Ready your wahays. Let's see the chat flooded with wahays. Wahay! Wahay! We can see chat, so I'm, I'm seeing you. <laughs> okay, where are we 
we're at right now. So basically this boggy race is heavily rubber banded. So if I lose a little bit on purpose at the beginning, grab a bunch of items, he'll slow down heavily and I can catch up. This boggy race is something you have to do and there's a lot of stuff in the level you can collect during it. The sound the genuine sadness when you when you pass him, he's like, oh <laughs> <Duh. laughs> <laughs> That's my new favorite sound. Oh, sub alert. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. When, people, when people unsub. Yeah. People, oh. An unsub alert. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, dude. You put so much oh pressure on God. people. Oh, yeah. Shame them. Let's, let's shame. Shame. Okay. Unsub notification. Dude, they, they announced an unfollowing? Oh. Dude, like a day after someone like gifted like 300 <laughs> subs, and then the day comes where they all go away. Oh, my God. <laughs> da, 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 da. Combo, combo, combo. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that would be depressing. Okay, anyways. I won the race, and uh, yeah, you kind of like can jump up hills really, really fast. So right at the end, you pass them. Yeah, my my visual is really, really, really bad. I don't know if someone wants to like <laughs> help. <laughs> it's like it's just it keeps like flickering really, really badly. Do you have a sub emote of the? Wahey bear? I, I do, I'm, I do. Okay, pretty. Chad is absolutely engulfed in that bear. Right oh, now. nice. I love that. I just that. want you to know, you got, you got, the, you got the duck homies. Yeah. What are they called? What are your, your community? The ducklings. Ducklings? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Actually, is, is, there, is there a lore here? Why Why is your tag duck? You, oh, you want to know the lore? I mean, we, I we did, must have learned about the runner. A, the I legend. did have a different name, you might recall. I used to be called Dickus Khan. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> you, you actually forgot. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, he's so, baiting it. He's baiting uh, it. Okay, so so Kangaskhan's favorite Pokemon. Okay, and yeah, then yeah, naturally well, something like that. Something like that. You no. Know? My we play. It's actually from Civ. Civ Four. I would watch my brother play that a lot. And uh, Genghiskhan in that game. Man, he was a bit of a dick. So uh, <laughs> I just called him Dickiskhan. Okay, so he's, he's, he's in your head, rent free forever, and you just <laughs> have to like he just come up with the name. But I actually got accepted into Summer Games done quick, and they said that they wouldn't put Dickiskhan on the stream. Drama. But anyways, I also <laughs> felt like Duck was a much cleaner name, much more brand friendly, easier to remember, <laughs> and also fun. I like ducks. Ducks are cool. Ducks yeah. are cute. Okay, I'm gonna be showing up a trick now called Mad Monster Mansion early. And this is new. I don't think it's ever been showcased at any marathon like this before. B -b 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 World premiere. Un unless I'm wrong. But, um... Do you need serious time? I do, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll hold off on this for a second. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, before I enter Mad Monster Mansion, I have to break this gate. Because I'm going to leave it as the pumpkin, and the pumpkin cannot do that. So I'm going to break it with Banjo and Kazooie. And then I'm basically going to be quiet for the next little bit and explain. All right, so I'm going to prelude here. Chat, basically an exciting, radical new skip. Yes! Yay! Yay. Oh, man, I, I can't believe that. No nice. idea what I just watched. Yeah, really complicated. <laughs> I could take a little bit of time to explain. Please do. Well, Baskin, that was glorious. Woo, first Brand try. new tech, y'all. Brand new tech. That was nerve wracking. I really thought I made a mistake. So, pretty difficult trick that uh, involves a ton of frame perfect and pixel perfect stuff. So, basically, in Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie, they use the same engine. Worth mentioning, it was I think it was discovered in Banjo Tooie first, or at least utilized in that speedrun first. There's something called a bit clip. Uh, 
I guess named after 8-bit beast who found it. Um, there's a very precise pixel in the floor where you can go through the floor. Uh, the way it works is that you actually have to not only find the exact right pixel, but your facing angle also has to be exactly perfect for you to be able to do it. So the way that the trick ended up working is that when I died after breaking the gate, it reloaded the screen. And that's always going to be the same every single time. When you reload the screen, you have a certain facing angle, and you're in a certain location. Every single thing I did after that was like a perfect buffered movement so that I could get to the place I needed to get, face the exact angle, and get to the exact pixel in the floor where there's a hole. So I could go through the floor and then enter the level. Wow. And so it involves like a lot of pausing, obviously, because you have to pause on the right frame to face your angle. And then there's something I did called a punch cancel, which is where I press B exactly one frame before I press A, so that Banjo moves forward exactly one pixel. So every time you saw me jumping, I was actually moving one pixel forward. Oh, I was wondering yeah. about that. So just a bunch of like pixel perfect uh, movements and frame perfect angle readjustments to get to that exact spot in the floor that you can clip through. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, got a first try. Yeah. Sounds a lot like OOT um, positioning maneuvering. Exactly. It's like when Banjo all of a sudden became Zelda. It was when those were discovered. Yeah. <laughs> actually, jeez, did, didn't you didn't you run OOT briefly? Or still do? Yeah, for about almost a year. I was third place in 100% for a while. Hog? 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 I'm sorry, I didn't mean a lot of people there. Had, <laughs> no, a lot of people had no idea, but yeah, I was uh, very close to top time. Nice. Well, I was a top time. But yeah, watching these glitches, it actually is very... It almost is like a very good combination between Mario 64 and OOT, where you have some of those crazy glitches, but most of the game is like the fun, fluid movement that Mario has to offer. That's, That's like this game. Yeah. yeah, it really is. That's why I love this game so much. It has a good mixture oh, of both things. Okay, so I gotta get over here. Whoa, okay. Now we're gonna do some... The hardest part of the game is actually just aiming these poop egg poops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah making them really look easy, and they are not easy. Those are not easy. They're not. <laughs> Honestly, literally the hardest part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when the camera's not even facing, like, I don't know, like... Yeah, we have to ha hold, like, a weird random angle that's not a notch or something. All right. That was pretty freaking good, actually. Yeah, that was perfect. We're out of there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I do agree that this game is... A lot of it, and a lot of things, that, like the types of speedruns I gravitated towards at the time were like the Marios, where it's mostly just playing the game really well and really fast. It's not a lot of game-breaking stuff. As time goes on, we find more and more of that stuff in those games, though. Like, Banjo-Kazooie was very much beat the game really fast, like, just be good. And now it's like, also, we have a bunch of glitches you have to do now. So it, it does add to it. It adds interesting stuff, in my opinion. Without being like a total glitch fest. Heard that. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a comment to be had about how some games end up like evolving to where there's like so little vanilla gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, like like OOT. Oh, I'm at, the, I'm at the end credits. Uh, I don't know how you did that, but yeah, OOT. Yeah, yeah OOT is OOT a good example. OOT 80% is one where like yeah, just so little vanilla gameplay exists in the any percent category now that it's mm -hmm. like. You know, many runners probably just gravitate towards uh, a different category to play more of the game. Yeah. Over time. Unless you're into, like, you know. Whoa. Need that one. Whoa. Sorry, that's my horrible banjo impression. <laughs> Jumbo. Whoa. <laughs> that's a good one. Why does he say Jumbo? I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. It just sounds like Jumbo. <laughs> it sounds like. Nice. Okay. That's precise. Yeah, that's precise, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I jumped with the Jiggy into the water so I could skip doing the dance. That saves. That one's a good time save. There's also a secret mumbo token under that tentacle that I picked up. So that whole section's a little bit tough. So you'll notice, I don't actually ha have the speed shoes yet. I haven't learned that move. So I'm running to try to beat this timer without, without speed. speed shoes. Let's do and it. you know how you do it? You pause the game. And oh, it stops the timer a little bit. Oh, you stop it on the three or on the two. Okay. Yeah. So basically the timer, like, it, when it goes on and off the screen, it stops counting for, a, like, a really, really short oh, period of time. Oh, I see. Yeah. It keeps going, but it's, like, slowed down when I do that. 
Square does not appreciate that. They're going to patch that up. <laughs> no. I'm going to grab this health. Okay, we're in good shape. Gotta love the music in here. Actually, I feel like the rare staff's pretty, pretty like accessible and knowledgeable. Have any of them ever acknowledged Banjo Kazooie speedrunning? Yeah, in fact, Grant Kirkup has in, been in, uh, done interviews with uh, with Banjo Kazooie speedrunners at GDQs before, a couple times, and he's always watching the, the games that quits. That's awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of the uh, OG rare staff from back in the day are well aware of uh, their games being speedrun. Pretty into it, I think. And they are very accessible. Like a lot of them, like those guys, you can just tweet at them and they'll reply to you. So any, anytime you want to do that. That's a set pattern for that. So normally you're supposed to copy him, Simon says. Uh, but if you already know it, you don't have to copy him. You just put it on. Yeah, none of those notes actually correspond to the pitches. Yeah, I was about to say like <laughs> they all sound the same. They just play like a note from the chord in this song. That like as the song goes by, I can't imagine how hard that was to program. But like as the actual song from the stage is going by, the the note that's played on the keyboard matches it. Right. Whoa. <sighs> okay. So for, for, for context so far here, are we, are we nearing the halfway point of all things acquired needed? Uh, or are we past halfway now? Um, I think past. We're definitely past halfway through the run. By a little bit. Play that a little bit safe. You don't always have to kill that ghost, but he, I didn't like where he was. He had to go. He had to go. that jiggy behind because there's a transformation in this level so we can skip that dance all right so yeah just finishing up here and then i'll be turning into a pumpkin as you notice i just got my 20th mumbo token and it takes exactly 20 mumbo tokens to turn into the pumpkin so uh yeah i've had to be really really meticulous about my token collecting i can't miss a single one basically if I did miss one, there's a backup, but it like, loses like six seconds, so... Luckily, got them all. No washing machine. Oh, yeah. Actually, it'd be kind of crazy if it happened. <laughs> I, I low-key kind of want it to happen now. It's not <laughs> sloppy enough that it'd be cool to show it off. There's something that's even more rare, uh, where Mumbo says, I'm going to turn you into a T-Rex. And I'm stoked about this spell. It's my new T-Rex spell. And then nothing happens? That's even more rare. That's like half as likely to happen. Like one, in, one in 80 or something. That could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that one I'm not as confident on. This toilet. <laughs> so, like, can you give me some lure? Why, why a pumpkin? Because it's a Halloween level. I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> what do you want for it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, that's all I got. I figured you're the banjo lore master, you know. Yeah, I guess. Just thematic. It stopped doing the flickering. I don't know if anyone did anything, but I'm, I'm good now. So it's worth pointing out, you can actually enter this well here at the end with Banjo and Kazooie uh, instead of the pumpkin. And we used to think it was faster to enter with Banjo and Kazooie. I guess the idea behind like what's intended is like, you come in here and you're like, okay, this is impossible to do with Banjo Kazooie because of all these tentacles. So then you come back as the pumpkin. But we used to do it as Banjo Kazooie in the speedrun until we found out it's actually just faster to do it as the pumpkin, anyways. 
so we were making it way harder on ourselves for no reason. Yeah, it's a classic speedrunner isolation thing. Yeah. Just because just you can doesn't mean you should, right? Yeah, exactly. There we go. Done with Mad Monster Mansion. It went pretty well. So going down here, I'm entering a room now uh, where you can raise the water level in the overworld. And it is impossible to beat this game without hitting the switch. There's no way to do it. So even in any percent, you do have to transform into a pumpkin, and you have to come into this room. So if we could find a way to beat the game without raising the water level, it would save a ton of time in like the any percent category. But this right here, what I'm doing, is required in every single category. And right uh, now, I'm going to do an intentional reset. Yeah. Oh? Yeah. Oh. Well, so why are we resetting? Uh, because what I would have to do is I would have to turn back into a pumpkin to leave that room because it only has that little opening. And uh, I would also have to transform back into Banjo when I leave the area. And I would also have to go all the way back to Gobi's Valley. So this way, I go back into my file. It starts me at the beginning of the lair as Banjo and Kazooie, and I'm exactly where I want to be, a little bit faster. So I just hop back into my file now. Gotcha. Love it. Here I am. Tactical resets. Yeah. We're coming up on one of the, uh, I want to say like tech heavy, difficult speedrun levels, Gobi's Valley. Uh, famous, uh, famous quote from a, a banjo Kazooie speedrunner, Cosmic Heart, likes to say, Gobi's Valley. Where dreams go to die. And, and runs too? Yeah, and runs, <laughs> runs along with it. That's the dream. It's very it's true, it's very true. Well, while you're getting there, actually, I'm curious of, of some more uh, infamous duck lore here. Yeah. What, um, why Banjo? What, 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 what provoked you or, or drew you to want to speedrun Banjo Kazooie? I don't think we've heard, that, heard this yeah, story Yeah, well, yet. I've talked about this older brother a lot already in the stream, but my older brother uh, introduced me to speedrunning through speedrunslive.com. I actually didn't know what Twitch was when that happened. You wow. know, this is old, old school, like 2013, 2014 type stuff. And uh, so I just was like, immediately I was like, let me watch Banjo-Kazooie. Just because this has always been my favorite video game. And he knew that, so he introduced me to a few of the top runners at the time. And I was kind of hooked. For like a year I just watched. And then eventually I was like, I want to try. And then eventually I became one of the top guys, just from, um, just yo, from putting myself out there. underdog story. And, then, and now you're a based yeah. god. I'm definitely not one of those guys that like picks up the game and immediately hits the top five, you know. I, I was a slow burner. No, it's motivational. Yeah, you don't have to be instant god at everything. You can work hard, you can get good just like everybody else. Oh no, please. Okay, we're good. Woo! I might have to wait now, but I'm going to try to get this go clip here. Perfect. I only had one shot at that because I messed up in the sand. But that skip uh, is pretty important. We call it Gobi Clip, but uh, some people call it Jinxie Clip because this guy, the Sphinx's name is Jinxie, that we just uh, skipped that opening the door. Is that a lot easier now? Because you used to have to do the, a different way to yeah. flip in, right? It is a lot easier now, but uh, because of that, we give ourselves less chances at it. Right. Uh, because it's easier now, we decided to not use the waiting boots to collect all the notes and the Mumbo token that you saw me collect while taking damage the whole time. Right. We used to... Um, we used to we used to take the waiting boots so we'd have all our health so that we could try that trick a bunch of times. But now that we made it easier, we're like, okay, well now now it's easier. We, you have to do it in two tries. Yeah. <laughs> so I got it on uh, what would what was second try because I didn't actually get there in time to do my first try. Okay. And uh, I made sure that this ring was off screen. It doesn't spawn until it's on screen. You're supposed to fly through them, but because I got to it while it was spawning, I could just keep spawn with it, like go off with it jump through it, preventing having to fly.
So I have a kind of an ignorant question here. Mm -hmm. So like, so you speedrun Banjo Kazooie. Is there is there a big overlap between runners of Kazooie and runners of the sequel Banjo Tooie, or is it like they're just like two totally different games speedrun wise, and there's not much overlap usually? Uh, back in the day, I would tell you that there was definitely like not so much overlap of Tooie and Kazooie, but it seems like over time, like everybody who who only ran Tooie tried Kazooie. Everybody who only ran Kazooie tried Tooie, and yeah, I do speedrun Tooie as well actually. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, there's a lot of overlap now, I would say. That's cool. People that run both. There's like a little speed run we do where you do Banjo-Kazooie 100%, and then immediately when you're done, you put Tui in the car in the N64 and do Tui 100%. And you do them back to back to see how fast you can do both of them in sequence. What does that usually run like, like eight out? Like two is a two is a big game, right? It is, but it's it's gotten like a lot shorter hours. over the year. You can get like yeah, I think you can get like under six hours. Because you get two hours for this game and like four hours for the other game. Oh, I guess it's like under six and a half. You can't get under six. So. Okay. But two is pretty cool in its own way. It's a lot more glitch than it is movement. Like we were talking about that earlier. They have a lot more mini games in Tui too, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot more like Mr. Vile type auto scroller yeah. and wait for the timer to run out and get enough points. Kind of thing. So I'm gonna fly through this ring. Go to beat bomb. And then I'm gonna beat bomb this target. And uh, this is uh, exclusive to no FFM because I do have to learn speed shoes. I'm gonna go do it before entering this pyramid. Bounce off the wall, get into Talent Trot, learn the move right here. Bottles is gonna give me full health, and I'm gonna run as fast as I can. the pyramid before the time runs out anyway. Sweet! Awesome. So I'm going to do another off-screen spawn. Oh no, I think I messed this up. Yeah, uh, that was my own fault. I was talking. <laughs> Let me just... yeah. There's a little bit of a backup you can do. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Pretty precise to because you're obviously supposed to fly through it, so it's pretty precise to get that jump to get there without flying. Not to jinx you right now, but I gotta bring up here, you mentioned something about you're not a swag god for sniping earlier back in the... Uh, <laughs> I haven't Mountain. missed a single you shot. You haven't missed a single... I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're Sometimes I miss, but not today, I guess. You're kind of, kind of base right now, not gonna lie. Alright, this part's a little tricky. I'm gonna take a second to focus. Don't think this is gonna work. So, there's a very, very specific spot. Oh, it worked. Okay, I need to keep focusing. Yay! Animation skill. Yeah. Okay. Well. Too bad. You can beak bomb through the floor there and uh, right into the loading zone of this pyramid, but I missed it. So I just now have to climb the pyramid like normal. So hit the switch. It it failed because you did it too early. It failed because I did it too early. It's a little bit tough because. It's hard to describe. When you get there, a lot of the tricks we do with flight, we count the flaps. Like Kazooie's flap. She goes flap, 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 okay. flapping her wings. And that one you can't do that because you could arrive at that wall at any time within that sequence of flapping. It could be any time. I see. So I have to more rely on a visual uh, thing, and it just didn't line up really nicely for me. And I missed it. A little tight window there. I understand because you know it's like, are you there at the start of the flap? Yeah, you flap, want you want flap. it to line up some way with the for me anyways. Like the flaps throw me off there because like if, if the flaps aren't if there's like a halfway or like a quarter way through a flap that I have to press B, it'll throw me off a little bit more. But no, I understand. It's not a big deal. Uh, it loses like a chunk, but nothing nothing major. 
to have to do it this way. No, your brain works like mine with that, with the with the, the cues. Mm -hmm. Like, I want something like razor, razor structured. Per yeah, for sure. Like consistency easy. is everything. Yeah. Yeah. You just want something that works 100% of the time. Because from there, we have to rely on like um, sound cues, and that, that that just gets really really rocky under the uh, under the clutchness. There's All nothing good worse though. Than, like, speedrunners deciding to do tricks that are like 50% consistent. <laughs> I hate that. And then, and then it becomes the thing and everyone's like, well, I guess we all have to do this now. And we're like, um, no, we don't. <laughs> Let's not do this. Ruin the game. Yeah, it's the classic speedrunner mantra, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Reckless risk reward time skip or the boring time save. Struggle. <laughs> and everyone chooses the, the, the reckless option. Okay, there we go. That was pretty bad, but uh, yeah, we tried to skip that maze by jumping over it. I kind of screwed it up a bunch of times, but got it in the end. Is, is that is that also a version 1.0 exclusive? No, nope, that one's possible on 1.1. 1 .1. It's kind of funny they didn't remove slope glitch from the game, but they specifically removed it inside the termite tower only. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna clean up Mumbo Mountain. Good enough. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reminds me of like OOT on 3DS, where just like the most random of glitches were patched out in that version. Yeah, and of course the one that they ported to the Switch was 1.1, so you can't do termite skip. Of course. It was like with Mario when they did that, and the, there's no L or no BLJs. Yeah, yeah. So, so the scene pretty much exclusively runs on original N64 for speed running this game. Yeah, and not only that, but the 1.0 version. Okay, nice. I got that. So this is the last ring. Now the Jiggy's gonna spawn. I have full health because Bottles healed me, but luckily there's like a really weird enemy right here that is super glitched, and he can deal like a, a huge amount of damage at once. So he just oh. dealt five yeah, damage wow. at once, which is actually too much. I need four because I made that mistake earlier. So I'm gonna get one now. Is it random the amount of damage he does? Yeah. It's unknown how to. Like, this is kind of a new trick, so it's unknown at the moment. Okay. how to do it to where you get exactly the amount of health you want to lose. If I had done this level perfectly without messing up the beak bomb that I messed up earlier, then I would want three health. I would be happy with that. But okay. I need an extra one now because the ending is going to look a little different. So, like, just backups in different ways to, to figure things out when, when you make mistakes. It's really important for, for speedrun, especially for no reset runs like this. You can't, I can't, like, start over. I can't quit. So that's the 10th Jiggy. I flew into it, skipped the dance. Nice. And, uh, nice, nice, nice. I'm gonna have to uh, take a bunch of damage in here to get down to one health for my death warp. But like I said, I wouldn't have had enough unless I got one more. Because right now I would have died, but not at one health. And now I have to do kind of a scary thing. Yeah, that's a tight one. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was <laughs> That was absolutely not marathon safe at all. If I failed that and died, I would have not gotten these five notes, and that would have been a death in a 100% run with 95, with 95 out of 100 notes <laughs> to have to recollect. I was sweating. I was like, but you know what? We did it. We, we got to it. Done. For, Gobi's for, Valley. For the fans, which by the way, we have another donation here. We have another 20. I'm seeing here. All right. Uh, that was from Nintendo. Uh, can you pronounce Natalie. That? Nintendo Natalie. Nintendo Natalie, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we're keeping track right now. We are at we are 40 of the 150 away from this like super YOLO swag skip. How much All time right. do we have Starting left here? Create, create the fun we were done. Um, 40 minutes? I don't know. 40 minutes. All right, Chad, just just, just tell me what, what I got to do to get you to, to donate 110 for the kids right now. Come on. It's, like, actually, oh, it's oh, actually 95. We got $55. Ooh. 95 dollars box. What I do I got? To see the cool thing. I want to see the cool skip. Come on, chat. Tell Same. me what's good. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty cool. Ooh. <laughs> Ducks hyping up. That's what you I mean, it's really serious. cool, guys. You should probably donate. All right, so we raised the water levels even more here so that we can open up Rusty Bucket Bay. And that's the level we're on right now, the infamous Rusty Bucket Bay. The heart, one of uh, mm -hmm. the hardest levels for sure. 
speed run level for a speed runner. It's uh, the second fastest level in the game, I think. I might be wrong, but it's a very fast level. It's like right. 12 minutes, a little bit less. If you're really good. If you're really good, then you definitely are. I don't know if I've done it in under 12 minutes recently. Maybe like once ever. But it's like 12 on the dot, basically. If you're perfect. Or a little better. And yeah, one thing we didn't really talk about is um, like consumable items like feathers and eggs and gold feathers. Stuff like that I've been having to sort of monitor. It's a little bit automatic, but you just pick up the ones you know that are completely in your way anyways. Right. So make sure you're always stocked up. At least have, ex like, basically we want to have exactly enough to get through the run. And we don't want to, like, go out of our way to collect too many extra. But, like, places like in here, I'm going to get a bunch of consumables just as they're already there. And some red feathers there. Some eggs down here. Oh, never mind. I missed that platform. Don't need them. <laughs> And now I'm about to do the engine room. Which is, uh, a lot of people will have some pretty bad memories of this place. Yeah. If you're like a newcomer to the game, you might not have noticed this room right away and have already collected like half the notes. And then all of a sudden you're in a room where if you make a single slip up, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. die. <laughs> because there's a, a death plane at the bottom of this room. So definitely don't want to fall. Give me your amateur game designer backseat here. Do you think that this death plane is too unforgiving, or yes, just, yeah. like, okay? I, I think it shouldn't be a death plane. I think the the basic. If I were a game designer, like I'm not trying to be a baby. Obviously, I like a challenge. I love a hard game, but this is like so random out of nowhere that there's a death hole here. Oh, I see. There's like, nowhere else in the game like that. Such a steep escalation. Yeah. I've and done this uh, I'm using frames. I'm using iframes to get through these. There's a way to slow down these propellers. Uh, so that they, they slow down and you have to jump through. But yeah, I'm using iframes. It's still a little bit tricky, but I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it. Nice. We're through. Okay, no death in the engine room. I, I died here at uh, uh, SGDQ. Ooh, boy. I think I remember that, yeah. actually. I actually lost the race because of it. I remember seeing that. Oh, man. Wait, uh, wait. Redemption. It's a random wait, clip there. Wait, you, just, you just walk through it, that's it? Just ignore just, walls? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the explanation there. All just right. Walk, you just walk. <laughs> Walls are optional. <laughs> Wait, you can just walk over it? <laughs> also, I like that you kind of revealed a little bit of your, your inner mental workings there, because you were like, if I just don't think about <laughs> failing the 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 iframe damage boost, it, it'll be fine. Well, it's like the last thing that happened in Gobi's Valley. The easiest way is to just like keep doing commentary, Terry, keep talking with you guys back and forth to just like play or something like this. I don't want to overthink, right? And right. Overthink or, overthink or dwell on the negative. Exactly. You just got to keep playing. No I, I, no, I see it. I see it. For a game like this, like, it can be really hard to get a reasonable time in a no reset run because of uh, an unintentional death is just huge devastation time. <laughs> No, I like to always bring up like the mental. I, I do think that speed running is like a lot of attention goes to the execution, but there it's definitely a pretty big portion of it's going to be the mental part to be able to nail the hard trick under the under the clutch of being on your best pace. Yeah, well, a lot of the execution is based off of the mental. Right. If, if, you're, if you're not confident you can nail it, yeah. are you going to nail it? Exactly. Like if you don't believe. If you don't believe in your like you know perfect eight coin uh, TikTok clock, are you gonna get it? No. <laughs> She's nodding right now. No. If you like, believe, you gotta believe in the memory. Muscle yeah. Memory. Believe in the muscle memory and then practice it a million times until you know that you'll get it every time. And when you're nervous on stage, you have to practice even more because you'll lose some of that confidence. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get. And you gotta you, really understand the mental game. You can game. feel it too. Sometimes you really like feel. That you don't, uh, you're not confident with your own muscle memory, and it's just like the worst thing ever. Yeah. Dang. I went for a frame perfect skip there. Uh, that I didn't. I, I, I kind of just changed my setup for it to where it's a little bit faster, but also a little less consistent. So that was completely counter <laughs> what we were just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Just thought I'd go for it. A little low on health now. A little bit worried about it. I'll probably heal shortly. Uh, just a little bit. 
for because Rusty Bucket Bay is a bit scary, but unforgiving. There are some enemies that deal two damage, so there's just a the potential of me dying outright with two health. But I'll show you a nifty way that you can play it safe in this level, level and still be quite fast. This room always looks cool because a lot of stuff is done off camera. Yeah. But uh, so basically, if I enter this room, not in Talon Trot, whoa, that was weird. and then I just shoot an egg from entering, then I uh, break open the, the healing hive, and there's health everywhere now. Obviously, you don't have to do it, but if you're low on health, then you want to heal up, because these guys deal two damage. So if any of them hit me, I would be dead. So it's a good thing I healed. Lol. All right. Not the cleanest, but we're out of there. Gotcha. Alive. Most important thing. So here's another question. So when it comes to speedrunning this game, what's the community stance on, like, controllers? Does everyone love N64 controller? Are y'all really picky about your sticks, or, like... Um, with this game, not a lot of people are picky about the sticks. Like, I know Mario 64 is a yeah. huge conversation. It's not really like that with Banjo. There, I think there's like a couple of people that might play on Ori, but for the most part, we uh, we just try to get uh, an original N64 controller with a decent stick. For this game, honestly, I kind of prefer it to be a little bit used, like oh. not 10 out of 10. Yeah. Okay. Nice Can you give me a little bit of some contrast here, Cheese? Like what? Because uh, because he's, he's name dropped 64, so I know y'all be y'all be using. I was just thinking about it. I think. I would think that the reason is because Mario 64 has a lot. It's based off of a lot of very precise positions that you have to hold on joysticks. So if you don't really like the OEM stick and you try to do these really precise positionings and it just doesn't work out for you, it's a really, it, it makes it makes or break the game. It makes, it makes or breaks the game in terms of speedrunning. I like because I don't like OEM controllers. I like Hori's. I can't use OEM controllers for, for Mario. It's impossible. Like I wouldn't be able to do like most of the tricks. So it's like really, really important that you're very comfortable with the controller. I guess I don't know. Maybe Banjo is more like overall fluid movement. Well, for me, I think the reason that we're all like there's a lot of um, and then this also is true in Tui. The Banjo games have like these random extra parts to them that isn't just running around. Like, Mario 64 has, like, most of the time, you're running around as Mario. Yeah. This game, there's some parts where you're flying. And flying with a really, really, really tight, perfect stick is very, very hard. Mm. It's precise. It's, it's so sensitive. And so, like, that's where I kind of like a bit of a worked-in stick. Because, like, then it's, it just feels less sensitive. And uh, with Tui, you have, like, first-person shooter stuff. And that's the same thing. The, the way it's designed naturally in the game is very, very sensitive. So for me, I, I always like to have, like, not, like a stick that I played with a little bit already. Oh, thanks for the insight. Yeah, that's just me, and I think a, a couple other banjo runners agree with that. Also, I got, I got some good news here. We got another $20 from uh, Derekin. Yeah. Um, I lost track. What was the number again we're looking for? We... Wait, I think we reached the goal. Did we? Wow. We Ooh. did. Hey! It's, we started at 2016. We're at 2180. That's more than 150. All right. Yeah. I'm going to be doing dog skip. Hey! No problem. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it is. Super swag YOLO skip. Thank you, chat. You're amazing. Yeah, for the kids, y'all. Tackling kid cancer. Thanks, chat. And Derekin is another one of my guys, so appreciate awesome. that. Shout out to the ducklings. Ooh, I saw. Wait, what? <laughs> Did yeah. you just get hit while in Kazooie mode and not exit Kazooie mode? Yeah, yeah. And get a recoil to get extra height? Yeah, it's a damage boost up to that platform. Otherwise, I would have had to leave uh, Kazooie mode and do a backflip to get up there and then get back into Kazooie mode. That's so slow. Yeah, ha well, so how'd you get hit and stay in Kazooie mode? I thought that doesn't even. No, that's what happens if you're okay. in Kazooie mode. You stay in. That was a Potters. bit scary. I've mentioned earlier those guys deal two damage, so I probably shouldn't have ran through a sea of four of them. 
with uh, <laughs> two health. Yeah. Uh, but I did, so. There we go. <laughs> oh. I'm doing everything I can to be like a half an hour overestimate. If I die, it's just. Now it's okay, I got 100 notes. But, uh. Yeah. We're good. Those guys aren't even close. Alright. So after this, we have Click Clock Wood, which would be the last level. But I mentioned earlier that we do have to revisit Freeze Easy Peak to get a few things. And I don't want to elaborate on that yet, but it's going to be a short visit, so we're basically almost on the last level here. So good job getting that, uh, getting those donations in. So, <laughs> you might have some questions about that. Yeah, I was about to yeah, ask. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that is kind of cool. Uh, I basically used Snacker just to get up there. Uh, I bounced off of him uh, to get the last Jinjo, and I jumped back in the water. Because if you are in the water and then you immediately touch a Jiggy from in the water, the game will skip the dance because you haven't touched solid ground yet. So it assumes you're in the water even though you're not. So I grabbed the Jiggy basically in midair before landing from the water. That's how that skip works. Awesome. And the final honeycomb, and then of course a quick death warp to get back to the beginning. Swag Ooh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Nice little fall damage. Yep. And we're done. That's a quick level, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Would you say that that, uh, that was the hardest level in the game, or do you think that uh, the woods are going to be the your, your most daunting? Um, it's, it's really hard to say. <clears throat> like you said earlier, like with Yoshi's Island, mm -hmm. for you, People are different. People are going to think different levels are the hardest level, and you might not even know what the hardest level is, right? Right, I don't. I feel the same way about Banjo Kazooie. Right now, for me, I find the hardest level to do fast and perfect every single run Mad Monster Mansion. It doesn't look particularly difficult, but there's a bunch of moving parts. <clears throat> uh, Rusty Bucket Bay, for me personally, is one of the easiest levels in the run. Even though there's Oh, you so know what it is, I bet? <clears throat> it's because it's your most practice level, because it was probably in the beginning of the, the conventionally difficult part of the run to do, yeah. but because you over practice it a ton to make it like numbingly consistent, it became like your, that happens actually. Alright, well again, you're going to have to have a little bit of focus, serious time. Serious or, time. Similar to Mad Monster Mansion early, <clears throat> there's a bit clip for Click Clockwood early, I'm also going to attempt it today. Brand new tech. Talk to him about it. Pixel perfect. Ooh, wow. I oh, got right, only one pixel in the entire ground is vacant to actually fall through, correct? Yes. Well, there's many, but the, that one, the, it's kind of hard to explain. It's not just the pixel, but also the facing angle. So all the pauses, every single action after I hit the switch uh, had to be exactly frame perfect, exactly pixel perfect, and... Yeah, it's tough, especially since it's right at the end of the run. Like, it's on the last level you have to do that. So, and it loses just so much time if you mess it up. Oh my, but, but what, is it, but what does it not. save when you get it, though? Like a minute. Like a like big... Like a, a yeah. minute? It's big. That's huge. That's and I huge. gotta say, even when I'm grinding out runs at home, like, I never get, like, a perfect Mad Monster Mansion early and a perfect Click Clock Wood early in the Yo. same time. Those big clips back to back, Dude, that's crazy. You're kind you're kind of built different, I'm just saying. <laughs> Feels good to get those uh, to show them off like 
the way that they're meant to be seen. Like, th those were exactly what I meant to do. So. That's, that's awesome. And this is also new stuff too, right? It's not like a veteran tech. This is like... No, nah, it's, it's not super new, but since the last time, it's, it hasn't really been shown before. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's contextualize what new means. Like, so this, yeah. that, those two skips are what, like a year old, two years old? Like, yeah, I think getting on two years, yeah. I think a little less than two years old. I would consider, that, that's, that's, I mean, it's not like... The game came out in 1998, yeah, so pretty new. <laughs> I mean, has there been any new speedrun development since then? There's a, few, there's a few things, yeah, like I said, the, um, the damage on the mummy hand, I mean... A lot of it's new because we really started putting time into no FFM. So a lot of this is new because we had to find a way to make it fast for having to learn the moves and having to revisit FP. Like there's some some stuff that no people might not have ever seen before if they haven't watched no FFM. Now was that there? Was that uh, deliberate fall damage? Yeah. To, to this get is your also win. deliberate damage. I'm trying to uh, get the okay, so I can move during that cutscene and get over here. Uh, then I'm going to flip through the floor if I can. I'm going to ground pound and die on purpose. Interesting thing about dying when you're out of bounds is you don't actually lose your notes. So I've kept every note that I've collected so far in Click Clockwood, and it took me right back to the entrance. I can go straight to Summer. Which was faster than traveling back to the beginning, right? Yeah. So essentially a death warp. Yeah, it's a death warp out of bounds. Which doesn't lose your notes or your Jinjos. Very nice. So when we're talking about difficult and speedrunning, there's also something to be said about a level that's not that hard, but it's right at the very end. So it's easy to choke when you're on good pace. I don't know if Cheese will say, is there any level like right at the end of Super Mario 64 that's not super difficult, but because there's so much pressure, it becomes the level where you lose a lot of runs. Mm, well, she went to go use the potty, so... Oh, we'll, well, we'll bye-bye. We'll, we'll, we'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> um, this click but, block wood on paper, it's not, like, tech-wise and, and movement-wise and everything. It's not necessarily the hardest level, but you're climbing a tree, and one missed input, even if it's an easy one, could lead to you falling, dying, and even just falling without dying loses a ton of time. Well, what was the question again? You asked, is there a, is there a level in 64 that is not... Very hard, but because late in the run, it could be nerve-wracking. Yeah, it could be like your hardest level. You can't, you can't get past it because it's so late in the run that you, you're so nervous and you just keep choking runs to it. Uh, as a spectator, I'd, I'd say probably, I feel like a, a lot of runners were dying to Lakitu skip and Rainbow Ride. Yeah, back, back in, in the like, day, yeah. like back in like five or seven years ago. Like now, it's just like expected to like, get good at it, but like that's a pretty daunting skip at the final course. Yeah, and everything about Rainbow Ride is nerve-wracking. Even if the level were easy, it's over the top of a death plane. Just like Tick Tock Clock. You're no oh, that's a good point, actually. You, you're right. If you fall, you're, you're dead. Like, Not wrong. So that's kind of similar with Click Clock Wood. Uh, it's long level, and there, it is quite difficult at points. And it's just right at the end. And if you're on a cracked pace, about to get a, a PB or a uh, world record. You're like, not wrong. Everyone's gangsta till they're on PB pace. <laughs> exactly. When you when you're like a minute ahead, of, when you're when you've got like multiple gold splits, best splits ever, and you're on god pace. Oh yeah, you find out real quick how gangsta you are on, on that composure. Oh my lord. And that's the part we were talking about earlier with the whole mental thing. Like, you can be an execution beast, but mentally, are you are you prepared for when you're on your best pace ever to then nail everything first try? Big uh, question right there. That's good, that's yeah, we, I, I, I asked Cheese a you a question, but you weren't here, so. Oh, what was the question? Well, while we're talking about this, I do have it. But like, that's like a clear difference between like you know how Mario 64 has the single star runners, and then the actual RTA runners. Yeah. That's like a really good example. Like, there's a lot of players that legit just prefer to do single star running than actual RTA because like they just really love. The, focusing on the execution part mm. and the whole mental part is like too much for them whereas I love the whole mental like aspect of it like that whole like dealing with nerves being under pressure and, and being on pace and like you know clutching it's runs it's a big it's part like, of it's it such, it's like on top of being feeling. the best in the world you have to be good at maintaining your composure yeah, yeah, yeah. choke yeah, as yeah. little runs as possible it's so much. what I brought up was that Click Clock Wood isn't the hardest level necessarily but it is the last level 
and lots of runs die here to being just super scared and on PD pace. Like, right. You know, and so I was thinking maybe Rainbow Ride is kind of similar where it might not be the hardest level, but it's probably still pretty hard. And then on top of that, you're nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say more so TTC, but they're both hard. The whole, <laughs> everything in Mario is hard. Yeah. But the ending is like, both, 50, last 15 minutes is just pure, hard, <laughs> difficult, non-stop difficulty. One mistake, you're dead. I mean, you got that, the Bowser fights, right? Bowser, Bowser like, fights oh, are just funny. Are so like, much harder than they look. A lot of games <laughs> tend to be like, oh, we reached the last boss, and it's like, it's like, we didn't know you're going to PV. But like, Bowser throws and Mario is like, even harder than most things in the game, and it's <laughs> yeah. like the last, last thing. You I gotta do. say, Banjo Kazooie's uh, not one of those easy breezy boss yeah, fights. It's, it's a lot of people hard, choke the final boss in this game. Until this, not an easy boss. But the more you practice it, the easier it gets. I guess probably similar to Bowser yeah. throws. But Bowser most, throws still. Like, yeah, most like people don't person. know this, but like the first Bowser throw is a three-frame window usually. What? Right? It's yeah. But the second and third Bowser throws are ye most of the time only two frames each throw. Wow. It's, it's a lot harder than people think. You know what it is? It's because they played as a kid. They're like, oh, I did it when I was a kid. It's easy. I remember it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh okay, my god, you, you I was you watching. Haven't, you haven't you done know. it in like 20 years, so you probably <laughs> you don't remember. Hello. Not to throw shade on anyone, but I was watching Ms. Kip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, Too I was late. watching Miskip doing 16 star, and uh, Michaela was in the call with him, and he missed Bowser throws, and she was like, "How could you miss? This is the easiest part of the game!" And he was oh. like, "They were like screaming at each other," and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, that's hilarious, because that interaction, it's like, you know, they're not very easy. You think they're easy because you actually are expected to do them casually, right? Right. So it's like, okay. No, it's the same thing with Mario Maker. Y'all should have been around when Mario Maker one first dropped in 2015. Every childhood Mario World one person was like, they thought I was trashing the game because they were like, I beat it when I was young. Why can't you beat these games now or these levels now? And it's like, oh my god. Same. I made this level. Oh, literally. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know, like. Why aren't you wall jumping oh. in SW1? Yes. <laughs> yes, I love that. Why, why aren't you throw the shell throw the upward? Up. Shell, throw the shell up in SMB3. Just all, all, the, all, the, all the memes. I mean, they're, 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 they are slamming their keyboard caps lock, like, like rampaging at me because I'm not doing the right thing. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. Meanwhile, they don't even own a Wii U. It's just the worst. It was, it was, yeah. it was ridiculous. All right, I'm going to bring it back to Banjo for a second here. Sure. Just quickly talk about um, Click Clock. What is a level? It's a really fun level. Uh, Casually, this is where I was gonna say like this has become one of my more favorite levels. As a kid, this was the one that I struggled with a lot and had bad memories of, which made me not want to like it. But it's really cool. It, this the same level repeats for four seasons, slightly differently every time. And things you do in previous seasons affect what happens in later seasons. So like I hatched a bird in spring, and now I'm in summer, or I I already finished summer, but you have to feed the bird in summer. I was a child and I never. I didn't understand what on earth to do here because of all the seasons, and I just got lost. I never actually beat the level. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and this game's so unforgiving. There's no any percent. You basically have to get everything to beat this game. There's like a few. You can miss like what? You can miss 90 notes, which is you know you can't Only skip a level. 90? Yeah, you can't skip any level because. That's crazy. Yeah. You, there's 900 notes, so and you need 810 to beat the wow. game. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Okay, that was close. Yeah, I was really <laughs> close, and I was basically, I had come, that, well, that whole thing, within the blink of an eye, I had come to terms with the fact that I was going to get knocked off the tree there, and then <laughs> like I didn't you get accept hit. That I was like, well, I got happened. hit, well, okay, yeah. and then I didn't, uh, you know, I was saved. This part's a little tricky and a little bit of new tech since last time, uh, getting these acorns. I'll try to show it off here. We do a pretty risky jump across the way here with a really late peck, and then Talon Trot jump down right to get that one in midair and land on that one. Whoa. Not really a good setup for it, but uh, one that we worked out that works okay is what I just did. Really risky stuff, right? As soon as I fall out of the tree, I'm losing mi the very bare minimum is 40 seconds from for a fall, pretty much. This is a level where, like, uh, if you're learning to play the game, you will have, like, a lot of PVs where you do fall on this stage. Oh, yeah. All oh, yeah. the time. 
It's like tippy in Mario 64. Really, yeah. If you're playing 70 star, so many runs are gonna yeah, die. Every PB has like three deaths in TTC, kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a level you ought to either become competent with as a new runner, or just like accept that you're gonna make a ton of mistakes and then yeah. keep playing the game. Yeah. I saw that walk up after the switch there. Swag. You just automatically get teleported back to the switch. Oh, you did it for. Oh, it was just swag. <laughs> was oh just my swag. god. I see you. It's just for fun. To scare people. Try hard, Jeff. I see you. Yeah. All right. A little bit of new stuff with Autumn. This is actually also the route now in FFM. This is actually quite new within the last year, within the last six months. We've completely changed the route for Autumn because we discovered another bit clip here that's actually really, really easy. Uh, so you reroute the whole level so that the last thing you do is actually enter Mumbo's skull, which is what I'm about to do after this whole thing plays out. Such a good gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's four notes in this room. I have to come here to get these. And then when I leave, I'm going to do a bit clip to make it back to the start of the level right here. Got it. Really fast, too. Wow. So you have to do five of those punch cancels to move forward exactly one pixel every single time. So I had to move exactly five pixels forward and then grab pound through the floor. And d yeah, here hi. we are. Duck. Ludophile says hi in chat. Hi. <laughs> 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 Says you're a god gamer. Thank you, thank you. God gamer. Ludophile is awesome. He is a nice guy, yeah. So winter's definitely one of the toughest seasons here. I wasn't actually supposed to open the door with that, but uh, hey. that was cool anyway. Uh, wrong, you planned it? Just yeah, no. Just be humble right now. The one thing to worry about with the beak bomb I just did to get to the top of the tree is that enemy can just hit you, and you could fall all the way down and right. die. Uh, that didn't happen, so that's good. <laughs> this level is so dicey. That was so scary. Yeah, that was terrifying, Jesus. Little oh platforms, right? And it's not so hard, but when you're nervous, it can be really bad. Okay. He's all big now. Yeah, this is Eerie, the eagle. And he's going to give us a little present on his way out. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Like, why not make it? Well, why not make it a fart, the fart noise? Yeah, they're used to it by now. So I'm going to be doing a trick here called the duck dive, because I discovered it. Hey! And, uh, and it may Pat or may not save time, but it's cool. Patented. See Do that? I, I fell off in gold feathers and broke the window that on my leg. That's kind of sick. Swag. Swag, yeah. And it might not, it probably doesn't even save time, but I like it. It's slower. Uh, it's not, no, no, not, I'm not. It's, it's patented, and other runners must pay you a royalty to use it. Yeah. Well, could you imagine if that's actually a thing? <laughs> All right, this last, this last flying section is uh, a bit tough, so I'm going to focus a little bit here. Ooh. That was close. Oh, so I tried to get that jiggy. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna focus. There we go. Gotta stay in flight. 
Oh. No. Oh, I mean, yeah. 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 That's what I meant to do. That's good. Woo. <laughs> so, yeah. That, that part's scary, and I really, really, really thought I would get the jiggy there. I must have missed it by a pixel. But having to turn around and get it without landing because I have to beep bump through the floor. Yeah, now, now, now bring up the, the stakes here. Had you had you accidentally oh, oh, oh. exited flight to acquire the jiggy after being missed, you would have been stuck in that room normally. Yeah. And would have had to, like, now... Uh, there's a trick called Ice Clip where you swim through the floor to get out of uh, that situation I was in. But... If oh. it doesn't work and I died underwater, I would lose all the notes. Oh yeah, we are coming up here to the soft lock strat, which is uh, it's a part of the game where the camera is going to freeze in place, and I'm going to have to rely solely on what I can hear to navigate somewhere. So we'll have to be quiet. We can talk a bit more about it after. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So swag. Love it. I'm glad I got that because I actually also failed that at SGDQ 2019. So <laughs> more redemption for Duck today. So, so what happened? What, what, was, what was all that? So you're supposed to get that Jiggy in autumn by watering the plant with Gobi one more time. Uh, but it's faster to get it in spring. With, oops. Uh, let me tell you about it in a second. Yeah, there's a glitch you can do where you plant the flower again in spring, and it acts as if it was watered, but then the game gets very confused, and it uh, locks the camera in place. So uh, I was basically having to navigate without being able to see. And now I'm going to flip out of bounds here, finish the level. Hoggers. Now we do some fun stuff. This is going to be, this is called the RBA or the Reverse B Adventure. I'm going to be taking the B out of the Click Clockwood area, which uh, you're not supposed to be able to do. There it goes. And uh, since I'm getting around the plane where Mumbo will transform me back into Banjo, I can take the B anywhere I want. Oh my. And I'm going to take it to Freeze Easy Peak to finish off the level as the B. Oh. Learning a lot here. I figured the transformation like lock was like a memory limitation, game engine limitation, but yeah. game does not crash when you do all this, it's kind of pogs. No, it's not. See, like most of any percent is done as the B, because a lot of it is collecting notes. So now I'm, yeah, I'm heading into Freeze Easy Peak 2, and uh, the whole level is going to be done as the B. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, so that we, how much of any percent now is, is the B? Like, like literally 50% of the run is you as the B? Uh, maybe more? Oh, jeez. Probably about that, though. Oh, my. So I'm going to get the jiggy that I left in that pipe. I'm going to grab all the Jinjos. Because I can get to them quickly by flying around the level really fast. And then I'm going to, uh, on top of that, get, um... I'm going to get the boggy jiggy. There's another boggy race to do, so we can get our Wahays ready again. Racing Boggy as the B is very difficult, uh, so uh, uh -oh. it's something that maybe I wouldn't recommend learning. Even if you wanted to do no FFM, leave that one out. It's not super important to do it, unless you're like really going for a top time. But of course I have to show it. Because it's worse. Of course. So yeah, I've got all the gingers except for one now, and I'm, I'm going to start the Boggy race. You're supposed to do this one as Banjo with Speed Shoes, but it works as the B, because the game thinks I'm Banjo. So I can fly. And I have to go through all these gates. Oh my, oh the gates work. And they're off screen. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. This is crazy. Very difficult. Like, that part's the hardest part. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just try to do this. Like Chad, this is so unintended. This is like so not how you're supposed to do any of this stuff. <laughs> And 
And moving the B is way harder than it looks. <laughs> you have to get really used to it. But uh, I can be very proud to say that I did a first freaking try. Nice. Hey, very nice. <laughs> there it is. Foggy race two as the B. And uh, now we just grab a Jiggy. And get the last Jinjo, and there's also a Honeycomb, and here we're gonna grab two. This is where that infamous uh, key is, right? Yeah, there's a key here. There's a bunch of like extra collectibles that aren't part of 100% because they're a one-time per cart collectible. Like very, very Easter egg stuff. Right. Wait, so, how, how do you just get out of there? I avoid it out by flying into the ceiling. Okay. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like... Yeah, it, the game doesn't expect you to be able to fly in that room, so they didn't program a ceiling. So right. it's just a void out if you keep flying up and out. Uh, okay. I like I just... Yeah, whatever. If I just... Walls, whatever. This is the thing about the B, is we actually save a lot of these lair jiggies for the end, because the B can clip into everything. Right. So right now, I'm going to clip into this one. Didn't need to hit the witch switch. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Just, just like, touch it. Yeah. B, is so, B is so busted. His nose, yeah. his clutch You're going to love this one. The B just walks through these bars for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Oh my god. So now I have 9 out of 10 lair jiggies already. I left like all of them for the B, because he can just do this. Oh my god, that laugh. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> and on my way to the very end of the game here, so uh, yeah, getting ready to finish it up. Um, I'm going to fly into the last Jiggy here. Oh, speaking of that, another donation now from... Uh, we have 100% collectibles. We've managed to get 100%. We just have to beat the game now. Wow. Well, quick thank you to Honey Do Taco for the $36. Wow. After the goal was already met, that's just some true banjo completionist right there. That's really generous, honey, dude. Thanks. Don't forget, if you like the run and you've never seen me before, you can keep watching me at twitch.tv slash duck. I do a lot of banjo speed runs. So, you know, consider following uh, my Twitch if you want to see more of this all the time. Tell them. So yeah, Furnace Fun coming up. Really big skip here called Furnace Fun Skip. I have to make it to the first death square on this board. And then by getting into Talent Trot on the space, which you're not supposed to be able to do, and getting the question wrong on purpose, it gets rid of the walls on the side of the board, and you can just skip everything. There's one caveat. If I get a picture question, I can't do it. And if I get a grunty question, I don't know the answer. Because you're supposed to talk to Brentilda throughout the game to learn things about Grunty. And I didn't do any of that because it loses time. And it changes every single time you play the game. So I'm hoping to get a question I know for sure what the answer is so that I can get it wrong. So here we go. There's a single pixel between the two spaces where I can get the talent track and get on the desk square. And I got a picture question. Which means I cannot do the trick. I have to answer this question correctly. And I have to try it again later. It's unlucky. unlucky. If that happens in your PB pace run, it's dead. And wow. it's right at the end of the game. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But it's pretty low odds to happen, but you know, it's definitely gonna happen from time to time. It also happened to me at SGDQ 29. <laughs> <laughs> so no redemption on that one, but nothing I could do. So now, but it, there's quite a quick backup. I keep my Joker's card so I can skip those two questions and I just get to the very next test score. So I have to do the same thing where I get into Talent Trot on the pixel between. A little tougher here because I'm not as used to it, obviously. I got a picture question. No way. So I can't do the trick again. I have to get the question right. And at this point, it's a little bit more worrisome because I have to answer a grunty question. I don't know the answer. So I'm just going to mash A on all of these and hope I get it right. That's the only thing I can do. So this is a good showcase of how bad it can get in Furnace Fun if you get very unlucky. 
There we go. Okay. Thank goodness. We could try it one more time. If I get a picture question again, what? then I have to die and start it. Yeah, no, this is actually a picture okay, question. Right, right. It's a but if I get another picture question on this death space, I just have to start the whole thing over. Yeah, so much do the odds, the odds on that happening. Pretty low. <laughs> Okay, I know the answer to this. It's Talon Trot, so I'm going to say Wonder Wing and Vulnerability. Get it wrong on purpose. Now, what was supposed to happen earlier was I can skip the entire board and go straight to the boss fight. Oh. And I guess I'm doing it with two health, so wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dog skip. Thanks for donating. Yeah. So I'm going to be entering the uh, boss fight with... Uh, Without opening in the door, I'm gonna do a pretty difficult skip here. I've that seen I, this before. I mean, it's it's, it's this. used for within any percent, but not 100. Yeah, yeah, in any percent. I'll get the clip here. I got it. Holy, not bad. Hey. <laughs> That's uh, very difficult. I kind of wish I failed it once, because then I would have full health. But anyways, let's just beat the final boss with two health. With two health. <laughs> no big deal. Here we go. Runty fight. So time is going to be on, like, shooting the last blue egg into uh, the big statue at the end. So a little ground pound recoil means I don't take any damage there. That's how I will works. take damage here though. But at least I picked up some health. Oh, I'm supposed to skip that text. Oh no! Wait, I took. What? No, we're good. Didn't... Never mind. Intended. <laughs> Intended. Uh, this is scary. I'm dead. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wait for this health. Oh my. <laughs> Give me some health. Where is it? There it is. Why are you farming so hard for my, uh... <laughs> nice. So yeah, now I gotta snipe her a few times here. She takes a lot of hits in this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta hit her with four beats. It's like Mario's like three bows and throws. Yeah, no, this so fight's long. Yeah. <laughs> now I just have to hit statues. And there's one statue I can actually hit during the cutscene uh, of them spawning. So I'm gonna try to line up the camera really well here. And then dodge two fireballs by, you know, she leads her shot, so I just run in circles. Poop six eggs on a very specific spot on the floor. And then activate this. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, yeah that you was... activate that statue right as it's spawning. So these cutscenes overlap. It's actually a 10 second time save. Wow. Now I just try to be an MLG sniper. Yeah, I see that. I don't know. Dang, those ones missed. Okay, but I wanted to help them. Fun fact that was your first egg missed the entire run. Oh, right at the end, of course. Alright, well, we're good. So time's coming up pretty quick here. The last thing I have to do is shoot five eggs into each of the holes on this while she's throwing fire at you. Um, but she leads her shots, so we have this pretty planned out perfectly. Just like a 3-2, two, 2-3 two, two, kind of thing. So three here, two here, two here, three here. And you take damage on purpose here, because she shoots a homing shot. And then there's a little pause, so you can get all these ones in too. And time! Time! Hey! Yay! Nice, all nice. right. Underestimate. Underestimate. <laughs> Let's go. 
awesome. Dude, Duck, you're kind of you're kind of awesome, man. Great. Thanks, Charles. That Thanks, was a geez. phenomenal showcase. Appreciate all the great commentary from you guys. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. You're amazing. Yeah, for, for, for sniping that six that six, six skip. What more can you ask for, right? Oh. Also, we got we got more donations yeah, coming we got in. Like a yeah, something. Whoa! Got here. What? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, there it yeah. is. Two hundred extra Honeydew dollars Taco. again from Honeydew Taco. Wow! Shout out to Honeydew. Uh, Duck, how's it feel that your run alone has already raised over ten percent of the total contribution so far? That feels really, really great. <laughs> Thank you to everybody from my community that's throwing so much money towards the charity. Really that's appreciate awesome. it. And yeah, everybody who doesn't know who I am, who's not part of the community, who also is helping out, thank you as well. So, one thing I'll say that's really good about that run is there were no unintended deaths. Obviously, if that happens, it'd be horrible. That's helpful. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was good to not have any of those. One thing that was particularly unlucky was just at the end there, I lost probably a couple of minutes on Furnace Fun uh, to the picture questions. So, I mean, I don't know what the time was, but subtract two minutes if I didn't get the picture right. questions. <laughs> so where, one more time, where can we see you, Doug? Twitch.tv slash Doug. Such a good name. Too, Duck, like yeah. D-U-C-K, let's yeah, go. Yeah, merge. yeah, yeah. Duck, yeah. All right. That's it for me. All right. Thanks, everybody. Oh, wait, we got a Melon Girl's coming up here. We can't miss Melon Girl. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Cheese knows. <laughs> oh, wait, she's way later. Oh, no, there she is. Good old Rare. Nice. <laughs> she has some very nice melons for it. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Hey. Yeah. All right, that's all we needed to see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, everybody.